Tony the Forecaster has been a true friend to our community. Enter to win your very own Freddy Bobblehead today at WJBF.com. Sponsored by Alpha Insurance. Who do we want? Jackson Massey. When do we want him? Now. Thanks, Jackson Massey. 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 Jackson Massey. 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 Six Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. We're staying sunny and warm for now. I'm tracking some rain that arrives for the weekend. Details coming up in the Bacho Stakes forecast. Right now, we're in the 64. It is runoff election day. From the sheriff's race to the state house, we have you covered. Plus, there's still time to come down to Television Park and roll up your sleeves to save lives. We'll take you to today's blood drive. And redeveloping downtown Aiken. What will become of the former Pascalis project? Your news at 4 starts now. What's going on with the Walker, guys? From Television Park, this is WGBF News Channel 6 at 4. Montgomery, thanks so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with voters heading to the polls today for the general primary and nonpartisan election for Richmond County Sheriff's race. That's the one where Sheriff Richard Roundtree is facing Eugene Brantley in the Democratic runoff. Priya Smith has been covering this race. She talked to voters about why this election is so important to them. with the people who are patrolling their area right. mm -hmm. and they get better participation from the neighbors in solving crimes. You can vote at your assigned precinct until 7 p.m. tonight if you still have yet to do so. Live in Augusta, Bruce Smith, WJBF, News Channel 6. And there's also an election in Columbia County today where it's the runoff for House District Number 131. Rob Clifton and Paul Abbott going at it on the Republican side of that one to replace Jody Lott. She chose not to run again. Both candidates calling for lower taxes, more law enforcement support, and improved education. And they just want to help the county thrive, they say. Polls close tonight, as Bria indicated, at 7. It is time now for a first look at the weather. Our meteorologist Miller Hyatt joining us now. Miller, no excuse weather-wise not to go vote today. Yeah, that's right, Fred and Jenny. We have picture-perfect weather to head that and what to expect coming up in your Viper 6 forecast. Fred and Jenny. All right, thanks a lot, Miller. Hey, a reminder, today you can give the gift of life. Still time to do it. We're about, what, 10 hours into our Giving Your Best blood drive. The folks from Shepherd have been out front all day here at Television Park, and we are getting a good response to a steady stream of donors stepping we up are. to help out. Yeah, there have been a lot of folks outside today. Hamlet's here is live now in the Blood Mobile. Hamlet, donating your blood is especially important in the summertime. That's right, Jenny. Folks at Shepherd Community Blood Center tell me blood shortages are prominent during the summertime, and the need for blood donations is critical. School is currently out. So we're not having any summer school drive or any school drives at the time. People are going on vacations. And usually during the summertime, we tend to get off routine. Last week, Shepherd issued an emergency appeal for blood because it couldn't fill all of the local hospital's orders. The response was great, and all of the orders were filled for the first time in six weeks. But we're not out of the woods yet. Our shelves are currently empty again because we continuously have to fulfill those hospital orders to help our local patients. To curb that need, the goal is
supposed to get at least 40 people to come to the blood drive. I was kind of nervous because I really don't like needles, but the ladies that were in there, they, um, they're really friendly. They told me everything that was going to happen, and I felt really comfortable. And even when they stuck me with the needle, I was perfectly fine. So it was a really great experience. It was the first time donating for both Jarvis and her mom, Nicole. My daughter wanted to come out. My mom actually told us, this bus is here, come and donate. So my daughter, she really wanted to do it, and that was my first time. I was a little nervous, but I went. I'm glad I was able to do it. It only takes about 30 minutes to save several lives. I love it. That's my, uh, my passion in life is helping people, and so knowing that I just helped a, a person or three is a great thing. And the blood drive ends at 6. You can walk in and register, or you can fill out a quick pass on your phone or computer beforehand to save some time. Live in Augusta, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. The Aiken County Sheriff's Office needs your help to find a murder suspect. 22-year-old Christian Reeves wanted in connection to the death of Richard Carroll Jr. Carroll shot on Red Rock Way in Graniteville back on June 8th, died at the hospital. Reeves is considered armed and dangerous. Call the law if you can help. Well, it looks like Aiken City leaders are moving ahead with... Augusta commissioners denied the recommended bid for audit of the Parks and Rec Department. Commissioners say they'll recommend to open up for rebids on the audit as at the next commission meeting. We'll have more on this developing story coming up on News Channel 6 at 5. North Augusta City Council is hearing about plans and pushback of a proposed development. Here's Graham Lee. North Augusta City leaders making a decision in the first reading of a rezoning proposal for the Sudlow Crossing neighborhood after hearing concerns from several residents. We're asking you to reconsider this and look at it from the standpoint that we do as we've lived out there for 30 some years. When they talked about building this development and my wife just turned to me and said, we're moving. They put that in and that, that just, just about tears my heart out. This is where my kids grew up. I don't want to move. And this is going to be a problem in itself that our children don't deserve. This comes after the Planning Commission denied a proposal to rezone 130 acres surrounding the area back in March. The plan is to build 500 single family homes on the property. Despite concerns, council members split the vote 4 to 3 in favor of the rezoning. I think at the end of the day, the plan that the developer is proposing actually has less density than what they could technically start building, you know, as soon as the site plan was approved tomorrow. Um, I, you know, so I voted for the lesser density. But those against the rezoning say, like the residents, they also have concerns. If we were to zone at R7, you could have a high density area in that section. So that's, for me, that was... That was the differentiator. I just did not feel like the zoning was right for, the, for that area. We vote R7. They could decide for whatever reason to walk away. Someone else could come and put all R7 there in townhomes. So we were voting on the rezoning. And for just a plain rezoning, I don't think right now that is the best interest of North Augusta. Discussions on the rezoning will continue as council members will have a second reading in two weeks. In North Augusta, Graham Lee, WJBF. News Channel 6. This week's episode of Your Hometown Road Trip falls on Juneteenth. And for this episode, they'll take a look back at some past segments that highlight black business owners, events, and history. As you know, a couple of years ago, uh, Juneteenth was signed into law as a federal holiday. Yes. So, but here in Willington, we were first in oh, this area. Oh, nice. To celebrate Juneteenth and we've been doing a Juneteenth celebration for uh, um, maybe about 20 years you can catch the your hometown road trip team back on the road Wednesdays at 12:30, right here on News Channel 6 and speaking of Juneteenth the celebrations continue this week tomorrow the Juneteenth Augusta festival will be held from noon until 9.30 tomorrow evening at the James Brown Arena parking lot. And in Bamberg, the NAACP will hold their Juneteenth celebration at Bamberg Veterans Park on Main Highway downtown. That's from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. A lot more to come here on News Channel 6, including some medical information that you need to know. Our daily medical report is coming up. And Miller has the forecast. Well, we have the tropics.
Olympics heating up and maybe some impacts coming up later this week. I'll have the full forecast in your Dr. Six forecast coming up. Hi, EJ. The dot com, Facebook, or Instagram. Compared to national screening rates across the country, cancer screenings are low in the communities that need it most among federally qualified health centers. M. Wen explains. A new study led by MD Anderson Cancer Center and the University of New Mexico found that breast, cervical, and colorectal cancer screening rates were notably lower at federally qualified health centers compared to overall screening rates in the U.S. Federally qualified health centers help around 30 million people who might not otherwise have access to medical services, including those who are uninsured. Researchers found cancer screenings used in federally qualified health centers varied widely across states. Certain states such as Maine and New Hampshire achieved screening rates over 60%, and others fell below 35%, including Utah, Wyoming, and Alabama. Staying up to date with your routine health maintenance is essential, particularly with cancer screening, as early detection of cancer is critical. Be sure to talk to your primary care provider if you have any questions about cancer screening for yourself or a loved one. With this Medical Minute, I'm Emwyn. You know, this hot weather could raise your risk of heat-related illness if you take certain medicines, talking about antidepressants, high blood pressure medication, ADD, stimulants, antihistamines, and water pills. They can deplete electrolytes and sodium, make it tough for you to sweat, and make you dehydrated. So talk to your doctor about the medicine you're taking and how it handles this heat, and just stay hydrated and stay inside in the AC if you can. Coming up, extreme heat continues to sweep the nation. It does. Now you can brace for the impact in a moment. Weather headlines on WJBF News Channel 6. Brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson. Safe homes of Augusta, helping Georgia recognize the hidden crime in domestic violence. We don't have to scream. So daily deal all summer. Well, one morning, me and my wife were headed to work. Bus came out right in front of us. And then I woke up hours later in the emergency. I was worried about the health and well being of my wife. My son contacted Austin Jackson. They took all the pressure off. They said they, they, they were handling everything. When they meant everything, they meant everything. I would recommend Austin Jackson Law Firm because they relieve you from all the pressure. Get Austin Jackson, the Augusta guy. It's time to come together and vote again on June 18th. Let's keep Richard Roundtree as your sheriff, the leader with the experience, education, and proven administrative skills. A safer street and a strong community. Please join these supporters and come back with a free vote on June 18th. Sheriff Richard Roundtree, solid, experienced, and committed. Let's come together and make this happen on June 18th. Keep Richard Roundtree as your sheriff, the leader with the experience. You've seen their faces from all America. Bodine, Jethro, Bodine, double north spy. I've seen another one of them double knot spy moves. And he fancies himself another 007. He's got double north gadgets. I'm rigging a bulletproof shield from a double knot spy car. Would you mind hollering out the heel so I can put a little radio in? And double knot disguises. Didn't know it was me, did you? And he's got the double knot smarts to match. He knows in his head but space. He's shaken and disturbed. <laughs> Weeknights at 9 on BTV. <laughs> people are on alert for extreme heat in the Midwest and the Northeast, all before summer officially even begins on Thursday. Heat alerts issued for 19 states from Iowa to Maine. Alexis Christophorus explains it could be the hottest stretch of weather in parts of the country in three decades. It is exceptionally hot, even for this area here in this part of June. A sweltering heat dome parking over much of the nation. Detroit
Detroit hit 95 Monday. In Cincinnati, a feels-like temperature of 104. New York City opening 500 cooling centers, with some schools in the region letting classes out early this week. When you have this hot, humid weather, slight exertions make it really difficult on these kids, and they're little. With extreme heat regarded as the number one killer in weather, experts urge people to stay inside with air conditioning and keep hydrated. Are these water drinkers? Well, I was a football coach before, so I'm very familiar with signs of heat stroke. Meanwhile, out west, dry conditions and gusty winds aided wildfires are still raging. At least two homes burned in Sonoma County where hundreds have had to evacuate. And in other parts of Northern California, people are being urged to stay indoors because of poor air quality. Usually the smoke is the thickest, not where the fire is. And in New Mexico, more than 7,000 people told to evacuate because of this fire just south of Albuquerque. Forecasters say there is the potential for record highs. Temperatures 10 to 30 degrees above average for multiple cities. Boston's mayor has declared a three-day weather state of emergency. And New York's governor activating the National Guard to provide assistance during this prolonged heat wave. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. So how hot is it expected to get in our area? Meteorologist Miller Hyatt here to answer that. Wildlife watchers are heading to Yellowstone to try and catch a glimpse of a rare albino bison born there. Take a look at this. A photographer got a couple of shots of the calf with its mother not too long after it was born. It hasn't been spotted in days, but Native Americans believe the albino birth fulfills a prophecy that better times are ahead. There's a lot more coverage you can count on at 430. Including reaction to the sweeping news protections for undocumented.